This episode of Experiences You Should Have is brought to you by Soul Blends, handcrafted in Oregon from botanicals to bottle, multiple healing balms, salves, and moisturizing products to bring life to your skin. Check out Soul Blends and use the code EYSH to receive 10% off your order. In the summertime, it's 85, 90 degrees, so it's tropical, it's warm, it's sunny, and you're in this exquisite water, and the dolphins are like, hey, let's play. Come on, you want to dive with me? Or they'll come up right next to you, and they'll be eye to eye with you. Welcome to Experiences That You Should Have, your how-to guide for amazing experiences, I'm your host, Gail Manasco, and today we are going to take you to the beautiful turquoise waters of Bimini. Now, Bimini is an island to the east of Florida. It is not part of the United States. Make sure you bring your passport when you go. And right outside Bimini, are these amazing pods of wild dolphins, uh, Atlantic spotted dolphins. They are extremely friendly. I had the pleasure of spending a week with these dolphins uh, back in 2013, and it was extraordinary. My husband and I actually went on this trip and we made new friends on the boat, Uh, that became travel buddies from there on out. And we got to have this amazing experience of swimming along these exquisite creatures in the water in a very responsible way. Now, I spent a week with these dolphins. I've swam with other dolphins in the wild outside of Hawaii, but I do not consider myself an expert in the experience. So today I am bringing on Allison Stillman. Now, Allison, she's an author. She's a transformational leader and coach. And she's actually an aromatic alchemist. And she has been swimming with dolphins for an extremely long time. And she hosts um, spiritual retreats outside of Bimini where you can experience these wild dolphins in their habitat on their terms. And Allison is such a beautiful soul. I met her in a harmonium class, like a a yoga chanting class, and just learning how to play a new instrument. And we we played this beautiful song uh, about the ocean one day. And then she started to speak to, to the class online about her experience of the dolphins and how the song reminded her of being surrounded by the dolphins um, in Bimini. And I'm like, I know that spot. I know it. I spent a week there and it was a magical, extraordinary experience. And this amazing woman hosts retreats there. She knows these dolphins So I asked for her to be on the show and she will delight you with her stories and take you on a journey like you've never been on before. Let's welcome Allison to the show. Welcome, Allison, to the show. I'm. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Gail. I know we're going to have a really wonderful conversation about our beloved angels of the sea. Absolutely. Uh, dolphins have touched my life, and I haven't been in the water with dolphins in a long time. I think it was 2013 that I was in the water with wild dolphins. But just curious... 
how did your love for dolphins start? Well, it started a long, long time ago. I've always had an affinity for them. And I lived in Santa Barbara for many years. And I'd often see the dolphins just right off the beach and call them in and say, oh, come to me, come to me. And I I have this affinity for them. And they're very telepathic. And so they'd oftentimes come close in. And, and I got to experience my first swim with wild dolphins in Hawaii, about 27 years ago, a friend of mine said, oh, I'm going to go to the big island and we're going to go swim with wild dolphins. You should come. I went, yeah, I'm there. (laughs) (laughs) And the very first time I, I had to swim out about a half a mile into a bay there, beautiful, beautiful waters, of course. And I got out in the middle of a pod of about 30, uh, spinner dolphins, which are really playful, fun dolphins. And I started diving into the water and swimming with them and they'd come up really close and they'd look me in the eye and their sonar would go through my body. And I was completely transformed by that experience. I could feel the reverberation of their sound go through my body and feel their love and their joy. And I came out of the water and took my mask off and I was still pretty far out in the ocean and I was sobbing tears of ecstasy. I felt like a five-year-old who has just had the greatest experience of her life and I could not stop crying these tears of joy. And I felt like I was more home than I had ever been in my life and that's how I got started. Wow. Best story ever. Oh, I've got some good ones that might even top that. (laughs) Oh, well, do tell. This is a podcast show. Well, I started taking groups there. And at the time, I was just working with women in a trip called Dancing with the Goddess. And we would stay in a beautiful home right on the bay. And we would get up early in the morning before sunrise and the dolphins like to come into that particular bay really early in the morning and we would get up and we would do ceremony and one morning I was up about five in the morning and I went out onto the deck and I was looking for them and they started talking to me and I couldn't see any sign of them and they started telling me this ceremony that I needed to create for the women that were with us on this trip and very specific details. And at the time I thought, well, is this really you talking to me? Because I didn't really trust my intuition around them and my ability to telepath with them. And so I tested them (laughs) and I said, okay, if this is really you telling me what to do, I want three of you to jump out of the water at the same time, spin and hit the water at the same time. And about 20 seconds later, three dolphins jumped out of the water, spun and hit the water at the same time. And I sat there going, that's impossible. That can't really be them. Okay, wait a minute. If that's really you, I need you to go over to that part of the bay and I need the three of you to jump out of the water at the same time (laughs) and spin (laughs) and hit the water at the same time. Five minutes later, three dolphins in the exact spot I asked them to go to in my mind jumped out of the water, spun and hit the water at the same time. And I said, okay, all right, (laughs) you got it. And so... That morning, we did the ceremony, which involves really beautiful ceremonies of really bringing people close together as a pod. I've learned how to really gather a group as a pod because dolphins interact as a pod and they want you to be unified as a pod in order to have the best experiences. And so we did all the ceremony that they had asked and we had the most extraordinary day. Everyone had incredible encounters. We were out in the water for about three hours with them. And it was exactly, exactly the, the, if you could 
conjure up the most perfect encounters with dolphins. That was it. And so I've learned over, you know, the course of time and particularly from that event that dolphins are very telepathic. They can connect with you five miles away. Wow. I did not know that fact. Uh, that That is extraordinary. And what an incredible experience you had. Yes. And, and, you know, it's interesting because we always think that we're the most evolved species. And the truth mm-hmm. of the matter is, is that dolphins are far more evolved than humans. Mm-hmm. Their brain has been fully evolved for 2 million years. Our brains are in a process of evolution and have been over the last 250,000 years. And just one simple thing (laughs) that will really bring it home. What do dolphins do? They eat, they play, they have sex, and they sleep. (laughs) Okay, tell our listeners how dolphins sleep. When I learned this, it blew my mind. It's really interesting. Part of their brain stays awake and part of their brain goes to sleep. Mm-hmm. And they take the, it, the brain takes turns taking care of the dolphin so that it, it, if it needs to breathe or you know whatever it needs, there's part of it that's watching the other part to mm-hmm. keep it safe. And that's how they sleep. They're, they're really extraordinary, extraordinary beings. And th- just the fact that, that their brains have been so evolved gives them the ability to know when their genetic strain is getting too thin. And they will travel 125 miles, 200 miles to breed with another pot of dolphins so that their genetics don't get too thin. And they also know that when their food source is running low, they stop reproducing. They continue to have sex, but they don't reproduce. Now, humans could learn a lot from that, right? Wow. I had no idea. Yeah, they're extraordinary beings. We have so much to learn from them. Wow. I am learning so much already about these magnificent creatures. Uh, Now, I learned a fun fact um, when I was in Bimini uh, spending a week with the dolphins there. So we were with the Atlantic spotted dolphins there. Mm -hmm. But there's also bottlenose dolphins that will come in and sometimes they'll babysit for one another uh, that a bottlenose might babysit for uh, one of the Atlantic spotted dolphins and, and kind of help care for their young, which was so interesting to me. They aren't even the same breed of dolphin and then they're helping each other out. So there's a, I have a really great story that's along the lines of that. So up until 2007, the place where I go, they've been there for 30 years. They have a retreat center there and that's where I bring my groups now. And they have a beautiful catamaran and we go out for the day and we're with the dolphins and they're very respectful of the environment and the dolphins and the home and how you're the proper behavior to be in the ocean with a dolphin, Mm -hmm. you're Mm -hmm. in their home. So there's etiquette that you, you, you want to play by. But I got married in on the dock at dawn in Bimini. And up until that time, which was in 2007, up until that time, nobody had ever swum with the, with the bottlenose there. They, I always used to think of them as the elite, like they were the Royals, the Kings Mm -hmm. and the Queens. And they would watch from the sides as the spotted dolphins get very playful and very interactive and, and the bottlenose, which are much bigger than the spotted dolphins, they can, they can be up to 12 to 14 feet long. They're big. They would always observe and they'd be slower and they'd move on the outskirts. And so the morning of my wedding, we got on the boat, we sailed out 
and two bottlenose dolphins came up to the boat. And so my new husband and I got into the water and we just hung out, let them approach us. They came up to us and two bottlenose dolphins swam with my husband who, and he and I were just holding hands and we were swimming really, you know, diving really gently and slowly. They swam with us for 20 minutes. And now the bottlenose swim with people and maybe not quite as, as playfully as the, as mm-hmm. the spotted, but nevertheless, they interact. And now the bottlenose and the spotted dolphins are commingling and they're reproducing together. Wow. Wow. So there's some evolution right there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So what would their offspring be considered? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't think I don't think science has really spent much time with it. I, I'm heading back there in August, doing another trip this August, and hoping that we're stable enough where that can actually happen. But I'm going back in August, and that will be definitely a question that I'll ask when I'm there, because this is a relatively, I was there two years ago, I couldn't go last summer, but I was there yeah. two years ago, and that was when the first offspring of bottlenose and spotted. I don't know if they'll be bottle spot or <laughs> spotted to bottles or what they'll mm-hmm. be called, but mm-hmm. but I think it's pretty extraordinary that they have evolved to to reproduce together. Absolutely. Now, this episode is about swimming with wild dolphins. Yes. Um, but many times, um, if you search for swim with dolphins, what you might see um, is maybe a, a theme park situation or a resort or captivity with the dolphins. Uh, can you share your thoughts around that with our listeners? Never, ever, ever go and support those. Thank never you. go get into a park, never go and support them. And here's the reason why. In the wild, they believe that dolphins can live up to their guessing 200 years. That's how old they can get. In theme parks, they live eight to 10 years. They suffer massive depression. They're very social and they don't get that in theme parks and they're mistreated. Mm-hmm. And and more horrifically, the way they capture these dolphins is there's a lot of what they call bycatch, but innocent deaths of, of corralling these dolphins for captivity. It's horrific and they suffer so greatly and they go into depression and, and it's, it's horrible. And it's nothing like being in the wild in their home where you are the guest. Mm-hmm. And, and I just cannot express enough disdain for those conditions. And I wish they would all get shut down and we would never see that again. So Mm -hmm. that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, Part of this podcast is to help introduce people to unique experiences in the world and especially in nature uh, instead of going to a manufactured experience uh, where where animals may not be treated in the best way. And I think it's really important since you are bringing this up for us to become more and more aware of what we are doing with our environment. Why would we ever think it's okay to put a dolphin in a chlorinated tank that burns their skin and mm-hmm. cuts their lifestyle and, and, and encourages, oh, let's just put an animal behind a cage or in a tank and let's not take care of the environment where they actually need to be living. Mm-hmm. And so if we can bring some awareness into the consciousness of let's preserve our environment, let's take care of the oceans, let's mm-hmm. take care of the forest, mm-hmm. let's take care of our natural resources and 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 not watch you know they're predicting in the next decade that we're going to lose 50% of this species on the planet mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. not acceptable we can change that 
by bringing awareness to taking care of our planet. Yes. Now, there are islands out there who have put wild dolphins into kind of ocean captivity pens Mm -hmm. where they'll bring their guests out. They'll open up the pens and let the dolphins into the ocean with uh, with the guests and then the dolphins I guess are trained back to they're trained to swim back to the pins and many guests will see this and say well the dolphins like it in the pins what is your what's your take on on what's happening here so there's a couple of things one of course they come back because they get fed it's easy food, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what encourages them to come back. I, I spent some time at the Dolphin Research Center down in the Florida Keys. And it's, it's, the dolphins can come and go. And if there's a storm, they'll go out to sea or they'll come back. But it's really the food that drives them back in. And that's what allows them to train is, is treating them with, with food, right? Bringing mm-hmm. fish to them. Mm-hmm. And, and, as long as they're in natural ocean conditions, I don't have a problem with that. And I think okay. that there's some great research that's been done. The Dolphin Research Center, for one, has done a lot of work about dolphins' ability to help autistic children and, and work with people with psychological issues and also mm-hmm. the dolphins' ability to detect um, pregnancy in a human far before the human even knows they're pregnant. So they, <laughs> so they've, they've done a lot of research and learned a lot about dolphins. And I think as long as there's absolutely no harm and they're in their natural environment and they can come and go, they can jump over the fence and jump back in the fence. I don't mm-hmm. have a problem with that, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah. All right. That's great. I know there's just a lot of these questions and it gets confusing when you see photos online and, and maybe companies that you love doing different things with dolphins and to understand the impact of that. Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, Now you mentioned that you have a retreat coming up. Can you explain what happens at one of these retreats? Yes. So I call my retreats swimming in love and I, they've, (laughs) <laughs> that came about because to me, when we go, I'm really gifted because I've been doing it for so long at bringing people together in a unified pod very, very quickly. And and total transparency, it's ultimately for me because I want to have a really good dolphin trip. <laughs> but I also want my group to have the best experience ever. And so we do a lot of ceremony, meditation, yoga, breath work, sound therapy, and we incorporate all of that in the week long experience. And also, you know, we'll bring a singing bowl and we'll call in the dolphins. They love singing bowls. They love harps. I've had harp players come and we'll play the harp on the boat or we'll chant in the water and Mm. they come in. They love the sound because of course they're built on that. Their echolocation, Uh their sonar is all about sound frequency. And so I've just found that If you want to have really incredible encounters, you get into their frequency. You play the way they play and they go, oh, wow. Okay. They're playing by our rules. Let's interact. Let's have some fun with these guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll, I think in the, I don't know, gosh, in the 27 years I've been going, I've had one one day where the dolphins didn't show up and they didn't show up because it was an eclipse and they stayed underwater. Nobody saw dolphins that day anywhere. Wow. Right. So again, they're in alignment with the elements, with the forces of nature. They're in alignment with all of that frequency. So as humans, if you want to play with them, you get into the same frequency and you be in alignment with that. So I, I time my trips now to not ever coincide with an eclipse. 
<laughs> but I've learned that over the years. You know, it's just like when you when you're doing trips. When I was doing trips to Hawaii, and we'd have to swim in from the shore, from a rocky shore. Mm-hmm. I learned you don't want to go on the full moon because that really affects the tides, mm-hmm. right? And right. and the dolphins are in tune with that. So you have to get into the rhythm of of the dolphins and their frequency. Ah, well said. Um, I, I'm wondering, does barometric pressure also have an effect on your dolphin interaction? I have not had that experience. I will say if there is a severe thunderstorm, it's almost like they know you guys should not be in the water right now and they'll disappear. I've also watched where, uh, this has happened particularly in Hawaii, where nurse sharks would come into the bay and the group would be out there and I'd see the sharks and I'd go, okay, we got to kind of corral everybody away from that. And I've actually watched the dolphins go and corral the sharks and move them out to sea away from the people. Wow. So they, they have this intuitive sense of safety and awareness of people and the vulnerability of people. And, Mm -hmm. and they know, okay, people are getting tired. We're going to take off now. That's right. another thing I've watched them do. You know, we've been out in the water for two or three hours and there's people that are hanging on the noodles or the float, you know, the flotation thing and and they're getting tired and so the dolphins will take off. Yeah. Wow. Ah. They are so smart. How oh. <laughs> they're so intelligent. They're amazing. They really are. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is your favorite thing about dolphins? You know, that's a really good question. I I love the joy that they bring. They're so playful and so full of joy. And I don't think I've ever brought a group and and witnessed anyone who hasn't been forever changed by being in the water with them. It brings out the inner child. It Everyone is uplifted into high joy. Your frequency really changes. And it, and it takes a little getting used to coming back into your world afterwards. I know there's a big integration that's required. And their home is so exquisitely beautiful. As you know, you've been to Bimini. It's one of the most exquisitely beautiful places in the world. The water Mm -hmm. is unlike anywhere else in the world. It's right, uh, it's the closest island to the Florida coast. And in between it, it's a a deep, deep cavern that separates uh, Bimini from Florida. And it's a, a big current of water. Uh-huh. And it washes the water of Bimini really clear. And so we go out and we're within sight of the island and the water is a beautiful aquamarine turquoise color. Uh-huh. It is it's, stunning. It is. It's stunning. And it's crystal clear. There's white sandy bottom. And the dolphins are in maybe 35, 40 foot of water. So you can mm-hmm. see the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it's about 85 degrees and you could stay in it all day long. It's absolute perfection. And so you've got this beautiful environment. Of course, in the summertime, it's 85, 90 degrees. So it's tropical, it's warm, it's sunny, and you're in this exquisite water. And the dolphins are like, hey, let's play. Come on, you want to dive with me? Or they'll come Mm -hmm. up right next to you and they'll be eye to eye with you And then, you know, maybe I've had experiences. I had this really great experience, a great story I'll have to share. So I'm a master aromatherapist and and have been doing that for about 45 years. And when I first put together some blends for my clients, because they kept saying, oh my God, your blends are so amazing. Could you sell some? And and so I said, okay, I'll I'll work some up. And I so I got all the graphics done and I got my website done and I got the uh, bottles and labels and everything done and I was all ready to go. And I had this 
psychic reading from somebody. And the whole reading (laughs) was this. She said, so you're to make a blend called peace, and it's going to have a harmonic that will help heal the world. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I just did all my blends and I've got all my labels made and I'm already going to press and I'd have to go have new labels made. And, you know, I'm thinking to Uh myself, but when you get a message from the divine, you listen, right? And so normally when I blend uh, a concoction, I... I'm so intuitive with it that I blend, I know exactly what to put in it, the dosages, the amounts, and I usually do it on a new moon or full moon and put some singing bowl energy into it. And they're exquisite. And, you know, or so I'm told, and and I happen to think they are as well. I could not get this blend working. I mean, it just, I was like, there's something missing. I don't know what it was. So I put it aside. I worked on it for a month (laughs) and I put it aside and I went to Bimini on a trip, one of my, my retreats and I get into the water and this one dolphin comes up and (laughs) I've never had this happen before. And it's just playing with me and circling me. And, and, and I happened to have a stiff neck that day and I'm, playing with it. And all of a sudden it comes up above me and it takes its tail fluke and smacks me on the back of the head really hard Oh! and (laughs) adjusts my neck. And then it comes up and it gets its rostrum right in front of my forehead and my third eye. And it starts sending all this sonar into my head. And I'm kind of, you know, it's, it's strong and I'm going, whoa, what is this? And I get this message. You have to put this frequency into that blend. You have to put the joy of us into that blend. And I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> so I went home after that trip, immediately got the master master bottle. And I started just holding my hands on it and putting this high joy, this frequency in it. And so I have a master bottle that I, that I bottle up from. And, and so many people, when they smell this blend, they go, Oh, this reminds me of the dolphins. (laughs) (laughs) So there is a lot more going on than just these cute little things with dorsal fins and peck fins and their tail flukes swimming through the water and all happy. There is so much that's being transmitted to us through them. And just to be in the water with their sonar and you hear these beeps and squeaks and clicks and, and it goes into your body and it changes the molecular structure. It really changes you. Yeah. Wow. That is, I mean, that is quite the story. (laughs) My goodness. So how could I smell this piece? (laughs) You'll have to get a bottle from me. (laughs) Okay. All right. We'll talk more about that. I'm intrigued. (laughs) I'm so intrigued. The the dolphin bottle. For your listeners, it's called Peace. And uh, they can go onto my website, alisonstillman.com, and, and, and find it there. Okay. I am, I'm truly, truly intrigued. Well, I, I would like to talk a little bit about logistics. Really, when is the best time to swim with the dolphins uh, right out of Bimini? And also, when is the best time to swim with the spinner dolphins on the Big Island? So you can't, it, it's very difficult to swim with the spinner dolphins. When when we were going years and years ago, there were very few people that were there in the bay. And it you could just swim out and be with them. And then what happened was a lot of tourists started going and bus loads would go and they would get in kayaks and they would chase the dolphins and boats would chase them. And so 
they passed a law that you can't get within 200 yards of a dolphin or it's a $25,000 fine. So Mm. it's much more prohibitive to be with them uh, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. That said, there are a couple of people that do. They go out on boats and they call them in, one of whom is Joan Ocean, who, who I know from years and years ago in the Bay. And she is a dolphin. She is in complete alignment with them. So if you were ever going to go to Hawaii, that's who you'd want to go with. Mm -hmm. And in Bimini, they are actually one of two people who have license to swim with wild dolphins and whales. And, And so it's legal. And as I said, they're very, very respectful of the dolphins and the environment. And they do it with such awareness and consciousness that if you were going to go with anyone, to me, I much prefer Bimini now than Hawaii because Hawaii, you've got to swim out quite a long ways. It's really deep. You can't see what's under there. And it can be choppy and windy. And mm. in Bimini, it's it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's yeah, just, it, it is. It's easy. It's easy. And the people that I go with at Wild Quest, they, they know the dolphins. They have longstanding relationships. They have names for all of the dolphins. And the dolphins are used to interacting with humans because there's so many groups that go there throughout the season. And the season generally runs this year. It's a little different because of of what we've been through. We're still getting the details, but it'll probably run from May to the end of October, perhaps. And, you know, that might need a little adjustment in the front end on May. But normally, in a normal season, the season runs from April until the end of October. And in Hawaii, the, my favorite times were um, mid-spring and mid-fall. The summer's just a little too hot, and the winter's a little too cold for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and then, of course, on Bimini, the for me, I like to be at the beginning of hurricane season as opposed to the end of hurricane season because hurricanes tend to ramp up towards the end of hurricane season. Right. So you always want to have right. travel insurance when you're when you're heading to the Caribbean. Right. Now, as far as the Bimini trip, how would one book it? So you can go on to my website if you would want to do a trip with me. I think I have a few spaces left on my trip. Um, And you can also go to the wildquest.com website. And my trip runs from August 15th through the 21st. And you can either, you know, find the link on my uh, website or on Wild Quest's website. There's listing of all the different trips and mine's called Swimming in Love. And I'm going to make sure to link to these in the show notes on experiences that you should have dot com. Uh, so click on episodes and you should find this episode there and, and find what you're looking for. Just and I like note. to say... <laughs> that swimming in the wild with dolphins is the most fun you could ever have in a body. And I've done a lot of really fun things in my life. And in, I mean, above intimate relationship, falling in love, it surpasses everything. (laughs) It is quite the experience. I've, I spent a week um, right off of Bimini with the Atlantic spotted dolphins. And it was mind blowing. It was truly mind blowing. Every single day we're in the water, free diving with them, playing with them, watching them play. Uh, they would pass the seaweed as, as like a little game to mm-hmm. one another. Uh, it was so magnificent to be a part of their world and to feel safe in their world. Absolutely. I have to tell you a really fun story. Yeah, I love stories. <laughs> so I, um, this was, I don't know, maybe my fourth or fifth trip to Hawaii. And I had a dream about a month before I was going on this trip. And I dreamt about a dolphin who had a nick in 
in his left um, pec fin, his pectoral fin, and very distinctive nick in his pectoral fin. And he came to me in a dream. And I, I don't recall all the details of the dream, but it was very specific of, I'm going to be with you when you come to Hawaii. And so when I was out in the water, he showed up. And the exact same notch in his pec fin. Wow. And he came for, I guess, two or three years. And every trip I would take, I'd usually do two a year, he would show up and we would play the leaf game. And he would go and he would get a big leaf and he would bring it up on his pec fin or on his rostrum or on his tail fin, and he'd come swimming up next to me, and he would, you know, we'd be maybe eight feet away, and he would drop the leaf, and then he would dive down and come back around, and I'd go to reach for the leaf. I'd swim over to get to the leaf, and as soon as I'd get maybe a foot away from it, he'd come flying up next to me, and he'd grab the leaf <laughs> with either his fin or his rostrum, his nose, and he would take off and then he'd come back around and he would maybe drop the leaf 10 feet in front of me, right? And yeah. it'd start to sink and I'd dive down to get it. And I would get again a foot or so away from the leaf and he'd come flying up and grab the leaf. <laughs> we played this game for, you know, I'd say five or six different weeks <laughs> and Never once did I get to get the leaf from this dolphin. <laughs> it was the best. And here was the same dolphin that had come to me in the dream and wow. showed up. And we had this beautiful, beautiful relationship. Oh, it's beautiful. That is so beautiful. Yeah, it was so special. Yeah, they're well, just, they're really, really amazing, incredible, intelligent beings and, mm -hmm. and they're emotional beings and they take care of each other and they work in a unified field as a community. And as I said earlier, we have so much to learn from them. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very curious of as to have an experience of swimming with the wild dolphins near Bimini, how old would you recommend someone going on one of these trips? So the trip that I do is for adults, but I know that Wild Quest offers a family week and, and they usually have one a year. And I think the age limit is six or seven Great. So, well, I've got a six year old, so that that's good news for me. There you go. <laughs> Get my kid in the water with them. Oh, yeah. And the, and Wild Quest is so great. They, you know, if you want a life vest, you can have that, but they've got noodles that you can mm. always have underneath you or a little board, or you'll have a buoy that one of the crew will swim with you. And so, you're always really taken care of. And again, they're really good at bringing you together as a group. And, and I really work on bringing everybody together as a pod. You, mm -hmm. you watch out for each other. You're always swimming together. You're always looking out for each other. And, and you really move and swim in unison. And, and you don't scare off dolphins. You don't swim off with them. You let everybody have a turn. And the mm -hmm. dolphins respond to that. Yeah. Now, what is the average cost of one of these trips? They're about $2,000, not including airfare. Okay. And where do you fly into? You fly into Fort Lauderdale and you have a night stay in Fort Lauderdale. And then early, early in the morning, you take a super small plane over to the island of Bimini. And then you take a water taxi to the north end of the island. Mm-hmm. And what gear would you recommend someone bringing with them? You can rent gear there, but mm -hmm. I really recommend getting your own mask and snorkel because masks leak very easily. And so if you can go to a dive shop and you can get a mask fitted to your face, 
then you're going to have a much more pleasurable experience of of being underwater and if you if you have the gumption to dive down a little bit you don't have to worry about your mask leaking so mm-hmm. I, I like to recommend that you have your own mask and snorkel and you can certainly rent the fins there i have big tall free diving fins cuz i like to dive down fairly mm-hmm. deep mm-hmm. and before i had those i would always bring my own uh, flippers because I have fairly large feet because I'm a very tall woman. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so I like, I like them to fit well. Yeah. And what about skills needed for this kind of trip? You really don't need any, you know, I've had people who don't swim very well at all and always had a noodle underneath them with a mask and snorkel and fins and weren't really swimming very much. And the dolphins make sure they'll come up onto the surface and they'll come right next to the ones who aren't diving. And the ones who are diving, we generally dive down to get them to come back and to interact more. Uh But it's not so much to, you know, have our personal time with dolphins. They they grace us if, if we're meant to have personal time. But they make sure everybody gets touched. They really do. They have this inherent knowing of, who's had time and who hasn't had time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as far as the trip goes, are you sleeping on the boat or are you going back to land in the evenings? No, we go out on the boat during the day. It's a fabulous uh, catamaran with a beautiful trap trapeze where you can lay out and there's mats on it, or you can sit up on the, um, on the hull there. And, you know, the dolphins love to ride the wake of the boat and you can get up close and personal when they're doing that. And sometimes we'll sail back in depending on what the weather's doing. And we usually get up, we'll do an early morning yoga practice, then we'll have breakfast, we'll pack our lunches, we'll jump on the boat, we're gone for the day, have lunch on the boat. And then come home and we can shower and have a fabulous dinner that's made for us. And we sit out on the patio overlooking the bay and have dinner. And then maybe we might do a circle that night, go to bed early and and start over and do it again the next day. Yeah. Beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. It is. It's gorgeous. And then there's a beautiful beach too that if you get up early in the morning and you don't want to do yoga, you could also get a massage or you could walk over to the beach. It's the most exquisite beach I've ever seen in my life. Uh-huh. Beautiful white sand as far as the eye can see and the mm-hmm. and the water stays fairly shallow. So you can walk out and just be in this gorgeous, gorgeous water. And oftentimes <clears throat> we will go to the beach and the boat will sail around and we'll swim out to the boat and jump on the boat and then go off and be with our dolphins. Yeah. And you had mentioned the $2,000. Many people may not be prepared um, when going on one of these trips, um, but there usually is a tip on top of the $2,000. What is the recommended uh, tip for a trip like this? So, I usually give the crew about two to three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. Yeah, and, and you just want to make sure that you're bringing cash, and that would, would that be U.S. dollar or something U.S. Else? dollars? Yeah, okay. yeah. And then you can also I'm trying to remember. I think I have also done it on a credit card too. Okay. But cash is always appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's eight staff members and you are so well taken care of. I mean, Mm -hmm. the food is phenomenal. Any Mm -hmm. dietary requirements, you know, are met and the food is always fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the accommodations are really comfortable and they've got um kayaks and paddle boards. If you want to get up super early and paddle across the bay, you can. And, and it's, it's gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. Now, what if you have limited mobility? Is, is this trip conducive? It, that would really be an individual, 
uh, you'd have to really be more definitive of what that means. Getting in on and off a boat, uh-huh. you'd have to be able to get on and off a boat. Right. And, you know, be able to maneuver around pathways to get to and from the dining area mm-hmm. and, you know, getting in and out of the water off the boat, you'd have to be able to do that. Okay. Yep. That's great. Um, my, my husband has um, a little bit of limited mobility, but he is a great swimmer and he and I did this trip together, but he's able to get on and off the boat oh, and, he'd be and fine. into the water and in the water, he's great. Yeah. He'd be fine um, then. But if you're, but if you're wheelchair bound. It's this, probably this not m- the best place to go for vacation. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. And, and then just curious to be mentally prepared for this kind of experience. What do you recommend to people coming on this trip so that they are prepared to feel the energy of the dolphins in the water? I think the very best thing that you can do is prepare by leaving as much of your baggage behind as possible. Uh Uh-huh. That is a fantastic tip. (laughs) Not an easy one. (laughs) (laughs) Now, for our our digital nomads out there, there's a lot of us working remote these days Mm -hmm. who still need to check their email or potentially hop on a phone call. Is there Wi-Fi on on Bimini? Could yes. someone be connected? Yes. There, there's very limited Wi-Fi. You have to be in a certain place yeah. um, in order to get it. But yes. See, there we go. Digital nomads. <laughs> you probably aren't going to want to. Well, true. Very true. <laughs> I disappear when I go there. Yeah. And I have a lot that goes on digitally, but... Right. It's for me, there is no other place that I love more than that place. It's my happy place of all the places in the world that I've traveled to. And I've traveled to a lot. It's my happy place. It's a place where I just come home to peace. Mm. It's it's so funny that, that we're talking about Bimini because I have consistently said that the most beautiful water I've ever seen in my entire life was right off the coast of Bimini. I say the same thing, Gail. I say the exact same thing. Yep. Stunning. And just that, that perfect turquoise color. It is perfect. It's the color that you want to see in the ocean that you never do unless you're at Bimini. Yes. And it's, it's, there is, there is something about the way it feels too. It's soft on your body. It's warm. It caresses your body. It's not jolting to get in the water. It's not cold. And you know, you, you don't get cold being in there for very long. You can just stay in the water forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, hopefully I'll get to join you on one of these trips. Maybe we could play harmonium for the dolphins. Oh, they would love that. I, I've talked to Garish actually about maybe doing a joint Kirtan trip. Oh, that would be amazing. Wouldn't it? You let me know. You yeah. you let me know. I, f- I feel like the dolphins would respond. Oh, yeah. To harmonium. David Pramal chance. and Mitten did a retreat there one summer. And they, they were there a couple of weeks before I went. And and uh, I went, oh, yeah, that would be amazing. Let's get oh, some yeah. kirtan going. And, of course, I always think of Garish because I just think he's the, the walking, living mantra. Right. Right. No, that would be incredible. That would yeah. truly be an incredible experience. I'll have to talk to him about maybe next year doing it together. All right, let, let's let's pitch them. Yes. <laughs> well, truly, thank you so much for for giving of your time today, for sharing your stories, and and for sharing this amazing, unique experience with our listeners. Thank you so much for inviting me. As I said earlier, I could talk about dolphins and my experiences all day long. I have so many stories and incredible memories and, and they just make me happy. 
Oh, I love it. Well, maybe when we need a little uplift, we'll have you around for round two for some dolphin story fun. I'm always happy to, to come and share. All right. Thank you, Allison. Thank you so much, Gail. Thank you so much for listening to experiencesyoushouldhave.com. Please follow us on Instagram, Experiences Podcast, and also check out the show notes on experiencesyoushouldhave.com. This is an indie podcast, and we grow by you sharing this podcast. So please share this podcast with your friends, your family, and the people around you who value experiences. Because you listeners are experience seekers. You value experiences over things. I know you. I get you. And I will help you find those unique experiences around the world and figure out how to guide to make it happen. So please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Leave us a review. And look forward to hearing from you online about your amazing experiences around the world.